All right, it's that time to start another semester. Um, let me just put in chat really quick that I'm speaking, so that way if you can't hear me. Great, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so uh, my name is Dr. Glassby. I am a assistant professor in the College of Coast and Environment, um, and I teach uh, Gulf of Mexico. This is a course that I created and that I'm now teaching pretty much exclusively. Um, this is the only course I teach. Um, I'm an oceanographer, so and a coastal oceanographer, so I feel like this is um, really like a home run course for me to fall into because this is everything that I love. Um, I'm not a native of the Gulf of Mexico, but I always told my parents that I really should have been born down here in the South. I'm actually a native of Michigan, so I'm a Midwesterner that um, probably wasn't quite raised in the in the correct place. But um, that was remedied after I got my degrees, my various degrees. I decided that I needed to move somewhere, um, somewhere south to finish out my career, and so I think I'm in the right place now. And um, I think that we will all do a fair bit of learning about this region that we live in, that we learn in um, throughout the course of this semester. Many of you have taken a course with me before. That's great. Thank you so much for coming back. It was really great to look at my roster and see all of um, all of those names that I that I knew. Um, that's great. So you you guys kind of know if if you're a repeat course taker with me, you kind of know my style. Um, this course will be a little bit different in that it will be more activities based, but it won't be any different from what you expect from me in terms of difficulty level or um, I think those of you that know me know that I'm a pretty, you know, a very fair grader and a very fair instructor. Um, and my courses are really meant to be learning opportunities rather than just an opportunity for you to get, you know, tested in terms of exams and your grades and everything. I want everyone to do well and just learn a lot. Um, so I am streaming right now through two platforms. One is Zoom and one is um, Top Hat. So really we're going to be using Top Hat almost exclusively for this course. I'm going to continue streaming in Zoom as well because I just don't know your all everyone's comfort level with streaming in Top Hat. Um, once we figure that out, I might switch just to streaming and Top Hat. But for now, I'll be on Zoom. I'll be in Top Hat. Um, you can let me know what works best for you guys. But yeah, you might want to mute me in one or the other unless you really want to hear me give this lecture twice at the same time because that sounds like it'd be pretty miserable. Let me make sure that I am recording. Okay, so I should be recording. Um, so welcome to the Gulf of Mexico. This class is OCS 2005. It's also OCS 2006, which is the honors version of Gulf of Mexico. I'll be teaching you all in the same virtual classroom, um, but there will be some differences for you honors folks, and we'll get to those as we move through this lecture. So this lecture is going to be going over the syllabus. Please stop me at any time, either via voice or via chat, if you have any questions. And um, I intend to be around for class before class about 10 minutes and after class about 10 minutes to give you all chances to ask questions then as well, just kind of like in a normal classroom. I won't just leave right away. Okay, so learning goals. I always like to start off the class with learning goals, things that we're going to cover in the lecture. Today we're going to learn about this course. So you're going to learn that this course focuses on the four fields of oceanography, geological oceanography, chemical, physical, and biological oceanography, as these fields relate to the Gulf of Mexico and other coastal systems. This is a difference from the um, uh, prerequisite for this course, which is Intro to Oceanography, which covered ocean systems as a whole. This course is going to be building upon what you learned in Intro to Oceanography to focus on coastal systems, which, I mean, I'm biased, but they are more interesting, let's be honest. 
Um, this course is designed to be a well-rounded treatment of physical processes, biological processes, and the human dimension. I really add a lot of human dimension into this course. It's really um, fascinating to me to see how science ties into things people care about. So that's a large focus of this course. This is an active learning course, which means I don't lecture a lot. I don't really like to lecture for a long time. So for the most part, I'm going to be only lecturing for about 15 to 20 minutes, and the rest of the time is going to be um, class participation. So you'll be expected to participate in class activities, exams, and assignments. And I'll, I'll explain to you what those are and what portion of your grade will be related to those as we go forward. And it's all explained in the syllabus as well. So who is your instructor? My name is Dr. Glassby. Please call me Dr. Glassby. If you forget, don't worry, I'm not going to like get mad at you or anything. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in zoology from Michigan State University and a PhD in marine science. I have over 10 years of experience in coastal marine science. I'm still relatively early on in my career. Um, but most of my experience has been in shallow water systems. And I study predator-prey interactions. That's what I love to study, um, especially as they relate to fish and invertebrates in the ocean. And I love to do field work. So that's a picture of me doing field work. My lab at LSU focuses on benthic ecology. So that's ecology of things that live on or in the sediment. Gotcha, don't worry. There we go. I just muted a couple of you. Um, things that live on or in the sediment. And um, also, as I mentioned on predator-prey interactions, here's some shots of some critters that are in my lab or that I have studied. Um, on the left here is a picture of my graduate student, Hannah, doing some work while scuba diving. So we are a scuba diving lab. Um, I have tank space in my lab to keep live animals. And right now we're doing a large scale study on invasive lionfish, which are shown in these two pictures here. Um, so not exactly, um, uh, I, I don't focus on just one animal. I have, I have a lot of um, varied interests and a, a lot of different critters and their interactions. Um, a lot of food web dynamics, that kind of stuff goes on in my lab. And you all are welcome to come to visit anytime you'd like. Just set up a time to uh, come see what we've got going on. All right, so um, now we're into the syllabus. When is class? So class is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10.30 to 11.20. Um, and it's going to be um, uh, synchronous. So it'll be online synchronous. My office hours will also be online. I've chosen a lot of options here for office hours for you all. Um, just to keep it open, I don't know what your class schedules or work schedules are like, but I'm hoping that this kind of covers everything. If you don't fit into any of these time slots and you want to see me for office hours, just send me an email and we'll set up a time to meet that fits your schedule. Like I said, this is the only class I'm teaching. I'm really quite open in terms of meeting with you, so I'm happy to do it. Uh, my office hours are Mondays, 11.30 to 12.30, Tuesdays, 2 to 3, and Wednesdays, 9.30 to 12. Or nine, that should be 9.30 to 10.30 when class starts. <laughs> um, so I'll be on Zoom. You can come ask me any questions about the course, any questions about my lab, my research, um, your career, whatever. Just come get to know me. I'd love to be a letter writer for all of you. So drop by, get to know me so I can write you an awesome letter. Um, online synchronous, I mentioned that all lectures will be live streamed in Top Hat. I'm going to keep going through Zoom for now as well, just to see, to make sure that everybody is covered in terms of um, they can access the class. You will be expected to attend the online class during normal class time for full credit in this course, but I'm super, super flexible. So we'll talk about the flexibility here. Um, so basically the punchline is you need to attend class for full credit. If you need to miss class, you should not stress about it. Um, just, just know that I got your back. And then recordings will be available after each class in case you miss it and you want to catch up on the material. How to contact me. So email works great. 
Um, I'll respond within 12 hours, usually very quickly, usually a lot quicker than 12 hours. Um, there are forums in the Top Hat uh, interface. It's, the forum is named Questions About This Course. If you don't really have an urgent topic, but you just kind of want to like, you know, ask a general question, um, that's a great place to do it. I'll check this and respond weekly on Monday mornings. This is going to be like a shorter, um, shorter fuse type of issues, right? And you can respond to other people's questions if you do know the answer so that you're open to respond in that discussion. And then I also have a class Twitter. I've never really done this before. Um, I have mixed feelings about Twitter in general, but I figure that it might be kind of fun to do a class Twitter because every so often I find a story like a cool science fact related to the ocean and I really want to share it with people, but I don't have any friends that really are tolerant of that type of information from me anymore because they're like, Cassie, if you have one more whale fact for me, I'm going to unfriend you. So anyways, I'm going to send all of my whale facts and fun um, fun marine science facts to the class Twitter, because I feel like that's a great, great spot for it. Um, so I might post some stuff, some reminders on the class Twitter, like, hey, don't forget your homework is due tomorrow. Some stuff that I wouldn't really email you all about. Um, but, you know, if you're on Twitter and you want to follow for some reminders and some cool whale facts, go for it. Send me a direct message on Twitter or reply to a post and I'll usually reply within the hour. How I will contact you. Big announcements will be delivered to your email through Moodle. I'll also archive all of the emails that I send you in the course announcements page on Top Hat, so you can check there. You don't have to search through your email. Small amounts, announcements and reminders will be posted on Twitter, like I said. So you don't have to be on Twitter to get the, the big info. I don't have any questions. Nope. Okay, so Top Hat. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using Top Hat, which is a classroom response system. This allows me to create questions that can be answered in real time um, during class and for me to be able to track who answers questions at what time, um, which helps me uh, keep control over discussions that happen in class. So You'll be able to submit answers to in-class questions using um, Apple or Android smartphones, tablets, laptops, or through text message. You do need to sign up for this. So Top Hat requires a paid subscription. It's $30 last time I checked. Um, and if you have it for another course, you don't have to pay for it again for this course. So it's just like a one-time fee per semester. Um, it's going to be used for viewing, downloading, and even streaming lectures, the daily quizzes, and class activities. And as I mentioned, this is an active learning course. There's going to be a lot of those class activities. So therefore, Top Hat is actually required for this course. Um, if you have any trouble purchasing Top Hat, that $30, if it's going to be a really big deal for you, please just let me know because I have options. So just let me know if that's too much to cover. Um, and again, I got your back. I'm trying to keep this course cheap. Ideally, I would like it to be free. Ideally, I would like it if Moodle was a lot more flexible that I could do these things on Moodle. But when I was designing this course, I just decided that Moodle wasn't going to work out for um, what I wanted to do. So that's, that's why I chose Top Hat. And I promise I'm going to use it for more than just streaming and giving you slides. So your money will be worth it. And then what about Moodle? So I will post lecture files on Moodle. You guys all see that the lecture files are up, to, up for today. Um, I'll also send messages through Moodle email because that seems to be the best way to get things to your email. I'll keep your grades updated through Moodle. So typically I update every two to three weeks. Um, your, your most up-to-date information though will be on Top Hat. So if you really love Moodle and you really want to get the lecture files off of Moodle, that's fine. You, you do that. Okay, any questions about those course basics before I move forward? Let me check the time.
All right. Still have more. We'll still talk about the grading and all of that. So we're not we're not done with the syllabus yet. So um, oh, I might have a question. Yes, yeah, you can still. So the question is, um, someone realized they're in OCS 2005 and they would like to be in 2006, the honors version. You guys can switch. That's fine. Neither one of these classes is full enrollment, so I don't think that there should be any issues there. Um, if you run into any issues, let me know. If you want to switch between 2005 and 2006. Yeah, no problem. And I'll talk to you about the differences too, um, so you can so you, so you know what you're signing up for. So uh, what is this course? So we cover the natural history of the Gulf of Mexico, um, which is closely tied to human history and modern uses of, of the Gulf. We focus on the four fields of oceanography, as I've mentioned, specifically as they relate to the Gulf of Mexico. And throughout the course, I want you to be able to relate the natural science of the Gulf to its unique human history. And my goal for you is that you'll leave this course with an understanding of how the Gulf of Mexico shaped and continues to shape culture in this region. Um, I want you to have a better sense of place, essentially. I also, I also want you to learn not just about the Gulf of Mexico, but also a variety of other coastal and even some offshore features around the world. And we'll compare and contrast those features to what we know about the Gulf of Mexico. So there is a very global aspect to this, not just because the Gulf of Mexico has a global influence, but also because we're going to be covering other systems, trying to relate them to what we know about this region that we live in. So in addition to a lot of science, I include a lot of um, uh, humanities, a lot of um, back different types of backgrounds that may relate to your major, like business, economics. I try and throw in some cool stuff, cool factoids that relate to the science um, whenever I can. Is there a required textbook? Kind of. It's not really a textbook. I'm not a big textbook person. Um, however, I do have an assigned book for this course, and that is um, The Gulf, The Making of an American Sea. So this is a... Um, more of a natural history book than it is a science book. I really want this book to be able to um, tie in a lot of the um, oceanography concepts that we'll be learning to a lot more of the human concepts that I really want you to be able to grasp. Um, this is the only text required for this class. I think it's somewhere around 12 or so dollars online. You're welcome to buy the Kindle version if that works for you. I don't expect you to have to gather so much from this book that you're going to have to be highlighting in it. Um, however, it is required and I will ask you questions about your readings um, when they're assigned. Um, the prologue has been scanned and posted in Top Hat and Moodle. Um, and I'll also do the same for chapter one to give you some time to purchase the book because I want to make sure that you've got some time for shipping because we all know shipping is crazy right now. So if you really want to buy the paperback or hard copy and you want to buy it off of Amazon, um, go ahead and do that. I've got you covered until it arrives. It's also available at the bookstore. So as far as I know, but let me know if you have trouble getting it. It's a really good book. I think you're all really going to like it. Um, I really enjoyed reading it, and like I said, I'm not a textbook person, so I think this is going to be a great alternative to get you um, immersed in what the Gulf of Mexico is. The course objectives. There are a few course objectives. The first is to understand laws of nature in the physical world as they relate to the principles of oceanography in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, we're going to compare and contrast natural phenomena in the Gulf of Mexico to other bays, estuaries, seas, and deltas around the world. So this is going to be really a science objective. We're learning about coastal oceanography. Course objective number two is understanding global systems. I want you to be able to relate the natural and physical features of the Gulf of Mexico, so that oceanography um, bit, and to social, cultural, economic, and political legacies of those systems. So we're relating the science to um, the human component. 
The third objective is global self-awareness. So I want you to associate course concepts with current events and be able to describe the implications for people's lives and earth sustainability. So this is really going to be, um, you know, when you're talking to your parents about what you're learning and they're like, why is this important? That's your global self-awareness component. And then finally, applying knowledge to contemporary global contexts. So I want you to be able to articulate and evaluate the state of major environmental issues in the Gulf of Mexico and develop a plan ultimately through your final project um, for ecosystem restoration in the Gulf based on lessons learned from other coastal or offshore systems around the globe. So this is your sense of place, understanding the unique problems that impact this region and being able to put them in context of other uh, problems that impact coastal regions around the world. That's a tall order. We'll see if we get there. We're going to try real hard. <laughs> It'll be great. How will grades be determined? Um, so you have a lot of different ways to get points in this course. You have two exams, which will total 40% of your grade between the two of them. You have daily quizzes, which will be 10% of your grade. You have class participation, which is a daily participation, which is 5% of your grade. Three homework assignments, which are 30%, and your final project, which is 15%. Um, so there are a lot of different ways for you to gain credit in this course. It's not all based on an exam. If you don't do really well with multiple choice, I've got you covered. We've got a lot of different options for you, but we'll talk about each of these components now. So first of all, the exams. There are gonna be two exams, the midterm and the final, and then each is worth 20% of your grade for a total of 40%. Exams for um, your 2005 folks are going to be multiple choice only, and then 2006 are gonna have a little bit of different questions thrown in, not just multiple choice, but also some short answer and extended response questions. So the question type will be a little more difficult for 2006. Exams are gonna cover material um, that it's covered in class, as well as your assigned readings. So that's that book that I'm asking you to buy. Um, I will be asking questions from, um, from those chapters. They're going to be questions that I cover in homework, probably word for word. So, um, so those questions that I'm having you answer about each chapter that you're reading, they may reappear on your exam. It is my intention to give you all of my pool of exam questions before the exam. I don't know that I'm going to be giving you the correct answers to them, but I'm going to be giving you the questions. So you will have them to study from. So if you don't do well in multiple choice exam types and you're worried about this, don't be, because as long as you study the exam questions um, and know the, the content that's on those questions, you should be totally fine. And I don't mind if you work together to come up with the right answers to those. So you guys can work together as a class to be like, oh, I know the answer to number eight. It's blah, 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 blah. Right? So you'll do great. And these are not going to be proctored. I'm not requiring any of you to have a camera for, um, for this class. So if you don't need one, I'm not going to make you go through proctor you or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, right? I don't really need to see your bedroom or whatever. <laughs> if you guys want your camera on, that's great, because that way I can see if anyone's laughing at all of my jokes, but you don't need a camera. I'm just assuming everyone's laughing at all of my jokes. Okay, daily quizzes, 10%. There are going to be daily in-class in quizzes on the material we're discussing. Um, there are multiple choice, one to three questions, and administered through Top Hat. Each quiz is worth 10 points. You're gonna get partial credit. You're gonna get six points for wrong answers. So four points for correctness, six points just for trying. Um, you can track your quiz scores in Top Hat and you have one week to dispute your quiz grade if you think that I did something wrong. Um, I'm dropping your 10 lowest quiz grades, okay? So you could miss like, you know, two and a half full weeks of class and that would not impact your quiz grade score at all. Or I could just drop a lot of the questions that you got wrong, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. That's, I'm hoping to give you flexibility to miss class if you need. 
class activities and participation. So I'll have occasionally activities assigned before class as homework. This is going to be related to readings. So I'm going to make you do a chapter of reading to prepare for the next class. And I'm going to be asking you one to three fill in the blank or multiple choice questions um, on that reading. And then for honors folks, those might appear as short answer questions. They might be slightly harder. These are all going to be available on Top Hat Friday, um, the week before homework is due. Uh, during class, you might also be prompted to participate in in-class activities. Almost all of these um, scores are going to be partition, participation based. So I'm not going to be um, really grading them besides just making sure that you're trying on it. Um, I reserve the right to grade a random subset for correctness. If I feel like folks are just writing like, you know, I am Groot on a lot of these answers, then I might start grading them. Um, but I don't think you guys are going to do that. So we'll, we'll just go with participation credit until I need otherwise. You can track your participation scores on Top Hat, and you'll have one week to dispute the grades. And then your 10 lowest grades in this category will also be dropped. So that's homework and in-class participation. If you need to miss days, you don't need to worry about it. Current events. So these are, these are going to be your uh, larger homework assignments that are worth 30% of your grade. There are going to be three current event assignments throughout the semester. If you've taken a class with me before, I gave current event assignments for um, Intro to Oceanography. Those were optional. In this class, they are required. The due dates for these are listed on the course, and I also have days where we can work on these in class. So hopefully that'll help. Your assignment is going to be um, relatively short, so I've got the word limits there. And then I also have a current event rubric to show you how these are going to be graded, and we're going to practice before you submit your first one so you can see kind of what I'm asking for. We'll practice in class. And then final project is worth 15% of your grade. Um, so what I want you to do for your final project is evaluate the state of coastal land loss in the Gulf of Mexico and develop a plan for ecosystem restoration in the Gulf. You can complete your final project as an essay, a letter to a public official, a podcast, a video presentation, or a series of infographics. Depending on what your strength is, you can choose any of these. You don't have to tell me beforehand, so you can switch it up, you know, as you start to make it. And you're like, oh, infographics are too hard. I just want to write an essay. It's fine. And I will have, I have a final project rubric um, online for information as to how that will be graded. For your, um, for you honor students, in addition to whatever form you decide to complete your final project as, I'll also be expecting you to summarize the information in a letter to a public official. So you actually have to write that letter regardless of whatever you decide to do for your final project type. So you have a little bit of extra work there. How do you do well in this class? Um, a definitely attend class. Um, you get easy quiz and participation points just from attending class. Um, and then those quiz and in-class questions will appear on the exam, though, of course, I'll be, I'll be giving you those um, questions that will appear on the exam. Uh, do well on your current event assignments. They're worth kind of a lot. So 30% of your grade is kind of a lot. Um, pay attention to the rubrics. I'm very, very clear about how I'm grading these. Please seek clarification if anything doesn't make sense. And like I said, you'll have in-class sessions to work on these, but you'll need to have outside of class time to finish them up because the in-class sessions won't be enough. Please start on your final project early. I'll have work sessions, in-class work sessions for the final project as well. Um, you can get feedback and clarification during these sessions. And if you get it done early, I can take a look at your assignment and let you know if you're on the right path. So. Um, there definitely is some incentive to doing that if you want to get full credit on it. And then I'm going to have exam review sessions where we're going to go over the exam study guides, which are essentially going to be those questions, um, the, the questions that are going to be on the exam. So um, definitely attend those review sessions because you guys can ask me about any of the questions that you aren't quite sure about. And those are going to be during class time as well. 
honors. Um, so honors students will, um, your course will be slightly different from 2005 in the following ways. So we talked about how you'll be responsible for, um, so we talked about how you'll have different higher level thinking questions, but you'll also be responsible for um, extra lecture material. So every so often in most classes, I have this, I've got some slides that have this um, little metal looking thing here, honors advanced material. Um, I'm teaching it to everybody. A lot of times it's really interesting. So I, I want you all to learn about it, um, but only honor students will be responsible for this material for exams. So 2005 students, you can, you can learn about it, but you don't have to worry about exam questions related to that material. It'll be clearly marked on lecture slides. Um, as I mentioned, you'll be assigned higher level thinking questions for homework and exams. Um, I'm going to grade your assignment slightly more difficultly. Um, so you guys have a different rubric. And um, all of the 2006 students will write a letter to a public official as part of your final project. Those are the differences. I really wanted to have a field trip for this course, <laughs> but things being as they are, we're going to have a virtual field trip instead on March 1st during class time. Um, I'm still looking into options for this. So I really wanted you all to go to um, the Water Institute and to the river, to see the river model, the Mississippi River model, there's a picture here. Um, this is just in downtown Baton Rouge, but that's, that's not a, a great idea. So I'm looking into options as to how I can make this virtual. I don't know if I'm going to go there and kind of like record something for you all or what, but anyways, stay tuned. We'll do something on March 1st. Pretend like we're outside. I think it's really, really, really important, and I think you probably all realized last semester how important it is that you all take care of yourselves. Um, online courses are really hard. It's a lot of a lot of work, a lot of extra work, a lot of learning styles that you're not really used to. So I'm trying to make this as streamlined as possible. Um, trying to set very clear expectations early on. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do to make your lives easier. I really, I really do feel for you. I want you to know that for sure. Um, so some of the things that I'm doing, I'm automatically dropping the 10 quiz and participation grades to give you the flexibility to miss class without any, um, you know, any guilt if you need to. Um, when they canceled spring break, break, I cried a little bit. And I'm sure you all did too. It's going to make the semester really hard. Um, I've built in work sessions, work, like work sessions, in-class work sessions throughout the semester. Um, I actually cut lecture material to do this. So on work session days, attendance is optional. I will be in Zoom to answer questions about class assignments, course material, etc. Um, we'll be going over rubrics for, for class material. We'll be talking about ways to make your, your assignments, you know, full credit. Um, yeah, so essentially they're like targeted office hours and just time to give you extra hours to work on your assignments. Um, if you need more flexibility, like you need more time for a due date, like you can't make a due date, please just ask me before stressing out about this class. I really don't want any of you to stress out about this class, even if it's last minute or even if the due date is passed and you're like, oh crap, I really forgot to turn that in. There's no way she's ever going to take, take this assignment now almost certainly will, just ask me. So I'm your advocate, I'm on your side. It really doesn't hurt my feelings if I have to grade something late, please just ask me, okay? And that goes for, you know, time management. I, ha I have, I'm a professor, I have a lot of time management skills. If you all wanna know my vast repertoire of knowledge about time management, just let me know, come to office hours, we'll chat. Um, so yeah, don't stress, just learn about the ocean. Any questions from you all? So that is a good question. So on Wednesday's quiz, um, I will be assigning credit 
based on Top Hat responses. So that's going to be, you need Top Hat by Wednesday to get um, credit for that quiz and the in-class participation. And if that's a problem for anyone, just please let me know. Because I make the rules so I can change them. The book you have a little more time on because um yes so that's a great question do i have top hat a top hat tutorial or navigation help so yes i can post for you all a um maybe i'll just email this a um a video that kind of um will introduce you to top hat um so I don't know if I can really show you on my screen because I think your screen is going to look different than mine. But essentially what we do is um, there, are, there are folders in Top Hat. So it's just like in Moodle where you have content and folders. And when you click in the folders, it shows you which activities are in there. Um, right now we're going to be in the class um, week one class folder because we're doing in-class stuff. And um, the homework is going to be in the homework folder, week one homework. And you should have, once you get into Top Hat, you should have, um, you know, the things that are, you know, coming up due will be assigned to you. They'll show up in red. And so those are the ones that you need to, to click to complete. When I'm going over in class stuff, as long as you're on Top Hat and you are um, watching my, my lecture through Top Hat, it's automatically going to pop up with those quiz questions and with those in-class assignments just right through Top Hat for you to answer. So Top Hat is really the best way for you all to watch my lecture um, because that's where the quiz questions are going to be asked. But yes, I will email you around a Top Hat tutorial. are welcome. Any other questions? All right. Like I said, I'll be around a little bit after class. So if you're thinking of something, you can ask me then too. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like when I ask a question through Top Hat. Right now I'm streaming through Zoom. I'm sharing my screen on Top Hat. So you should be able to see exactly what this question is going to look like. Um, so this is how I would ask a quiz question. And for those of you that are on Top Hat, you can go ahead and answer, though I'm giving everyone 100% credit today, so you don't have to worry about missing this. Um, if you want to get the credit for Wednesday's quiz, you'll have to sign up for Top Hat before then. Or let me know that you're having trouble and we'll work something out. So what I'll do is I'll click Start Question. And for those of you that are on Top Hat, it'll prompt you to answer. And this question is asking, who is your instructor? And I want to know Dr. Blank. And here I'm going to wait for responses. And you can see at the bottom I'm waiting. There are 10 people right now in this class that are on Top Hat, and they're, they're answering now. So I'll wait for everyone to answer. When you go into Top Hat, there's going to be, it's going to prompt you for a join code. And this is your join code. It's also in the syllabus. And that's how you make sure that you're getting into this class so you can answer these questions.
Does anybody need more time? So I have nine out of 10 answering so far. So just make sure that you click the button for that you want to submit your answer. Yeah, there you go. I have someone logged on too. It's great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. So um, from here, we can look at the answers, Glassby, Dr. Glassby. So those would be um, obviously correct. I don't think I put in Dr. Glassby, so that one showed up as incorrect, but I'll, I will correct that so you get the right answer. Everyone's getting the right answer today anyways. Okay, so you kind of see how that works. So I can do... Um, uh, I can launch in-class activities this way, and so you'll see how I do that in, um, in the next lecture. We can launch in-class discussions this way, and so it's just, a, it's just a way of it being a little bit more personal than just me lecturing at you all. Um, and this, is, this is the way that I much prefer to teach. So. All right. I don't know, my quiz appeared before the quiz time thing, so um, normally I'll I will warn you before we have a quiz, so that way you can pop on top hat in case you're not on there or tabbed out or whatever. Um, and you will need top hat for um, credit on Wednesday's quiz. Please see me if that's an issue. All right. I think this is my last activity of the day. We have just a few minutes left. And so for those of you on Top Hat, I'm interested to know why you chose to take this class or what you hope to learn in this course. Um, so this is a discussion. So your posts are gonna be visible by all students in the course. And so as in life, and especially when we're in you know, mixed company, just please be sure to be respectful. Um, you can reply to other students, but please just remember that um, we have to treat everyone like a human being that deserves respect. So please contribute, and um, yeah, I'm just going to hang out and chat while you guys answer. A lot of people really love oceanography. I um, obviously agree with that. <laughs> it's just, it's such an interesting way to learn about physical sciences. Um, I think a lot of the concepts in oceanography, they're not something that you really have had, you know, time after time after time again in primary school. They're just a little bit different. So that can make it a little bit more interesting to learn about. Got some people that love fishing. You're definitely in the right place. A big part of our learning about this region is respecting how the natural history has really contributed to its many uses by humans. And um, one of those, a major one of those is definitely fishing. So we will talk about fishing quite a bit.
And remember in these in-class activities, obviously today everyone is getting full credit for participation. Um, but for the in-class activities moving forward, you're going to have to respond in some way um, to be able to get credit. Even if that's just commenting on someone's post, if you don't really want to post for yourself, um, that's totally fine. So I just want you all to be, be able to respond in some way. I see some thumbs ups, that's great. Very cool. Thank you guys for testing this out. I think this is going to work great for us. Um, please continue to respond or, or reply to your other students in the class if you're interested. And um, otherwise, that's the end of class today. And I will see you all on Wednesday. And I'll be around for a few minutes if anyone has questions.